I'm really excited about today's topic, today's webinar, because I'm going to talk about how to pray like Jesus. Amen. And listen, your prayer life is everything. Your prayer life is your foundation. So I'm excited to talk with you today. Listen, I want all of you to just lift up your hands. I want to pray now as I, I'm about to start our teaching today. All right. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you today. That as I share your heart, as I, as we go into this topic, this exhilarating, exciting uh, uh, relationship, going deeper with you. Father, I pray that your word would be ministered, your word would be released, and we'll be edified, we'll be encouraged. Father, we humble ourselves before you. And I thank you today, in this time, in this moment, wherever you're watching from, I thank you for a deeper connection, a greater oneness. God, all we want is you, all we need is you. And Father, I thank you for your grace, your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Robo, I want all of you to just lift up your hands right now. And I want you to just receive wherever you're watching from right now. Father, I pray for fresh fire. I pray for great encounters. I pray, God, that you would become more real than the ground that they're standing on, the table that they're at, the car that they drive. I pray that you will become more real than anything they know and see. God, I pray now. Let the anointing be loosened. Let it flow. In Jesus' name, I break every distraction, every demonic deviation. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are a king and that your blood has been poured out over this broadcast. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, say amen. Hallelujah. Ooh, I feel the power of God. All right. Um, so here's the thing. I'm Korean-American. And growing up Korean, uh, Korean people, we are famous for the prayer mountains. I don't know if you knew that, but most Koreans, uh, you know, have a go to early morning prayer. OK, uh, my father and my mother, every single day, they would wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning and they would go to church and they would pray. All right. That's why there's such a heavy realm of glory at our church, because our, our parents would always be praying. OK, not just that, but the Korean church would be gathering every morning and they will pray. Why? Because the Bible says that Jesus woke up early in the morning to pray. So really, I'll, I'm born again. And Jesus saved me from drug dealing, gang activity, a really dark life because of the fervent prayers that availeth much. And because my parents prayed and they fasted, they cried out to God, I turned back to Jesus. And that was over 10 years ago now. Amen. So listen, if you have a product, if you have a loved one, your prayers work. Your prayers are effective. And God hears you. Remember, God is not a God who has ears and cannot hear, who has eyes and cannot see. He hears you. He sees you. He knows you. And if you call on his name, he will answer. Someone say amen. So, you know, uh, I grew up uh, in a family that my parents pray consistently. They pray every morning, early morning prayer. All right. Listen, some of y'all can't even get out of bed early. Some of you can't even get out for morning brunch or breakfast. But my parents woke up every single day morning going to early morning prayer. And of course, Koreans, not only are they famous for K-pop and for kimchi or for Hyundai and for Kia, but Koreans are famous for the Korean prayer mountain where Dr. Joe Young Gi, he had a, he still has a large uh, prayer mountain in Korea, and where people literally they pray uh, day and night, night and day. It's almost like a monastic or a, a monk type of culture where people left the inner cities, people left their jobs, and if they need an answer, uh, if they needed a, a breakthrough, they will go over to these prayer mountains. And there's hundreds, there's thousands of prayer mountains, even in California, Southern California. There's uh, tens, maybe even hundreds of Korean prayer mountains. I used to go to many prayer mountains in a season and, and I would fast and seek the Lord for about three days. And I would go to the, these Korean prayer mountains and God would meet me so strong. Amen. So that's the foundation that I've been born into. And that's the history of my people's culture as a Korean. However, we are in a time right now where most people don't even pray. OK, remember, prayer is not a once a week gathering where all the aunties come and gather. Prayer is not a once a week gathering where all you see is a sea of gray, curly, white hairs. That is not prayer. And unfortunately, we've made prayer to be this uh, like this 
you know, the stigmatism. We mean prayer to be like it's it's this old auntie, like this old Pentecostal weird, you know, you bring out the shofar and the prayer shawls and the oils and you bring out the tambourines. And, you know, so we, unfortunately, a lot of us, we we think prayer is just something that the old people do. All right, Pastor Ben, you go preach. You go uh, into the, the crusades, into the world nations and release signs of wonders and say souls while I pray. And listen, prayer is everything. All right, listen, I've been living by faith for 10 years, and you should be too. Whether you have a nine to five secular job, whether you are a business owner, or whether you uh, are full time and working in a church pastoral position, every single one of us, we live by faith. Some say amen. We live by faith, not by sight. But why am I saying this? Because prayer is not just your mom's job, prayer is not a job, first and foremost, prayer is a lifestyle. Prayer is the air that we breathe. Prayer is so simple. And again, there are levels and there are different types of prayer, which we're going to get into. But prayer is, it's its everything. Prayer is our foundation. Unfortunately, too many people want the pastor to pray, want the intercessor to pray, want the prophet to pray, want the mom and the dad, want the auntie to pray. Rather than the young people, I'm telling you now that there is a movement of young people who don't only preach, but pray, who don't only go on Instagram and social media, but pray. Remember, God is looking for people not with publicity and popularity, but with a deep prayer life. When people see you, tend they see the fragrance of the fumes of the smoke from the sacrifice of the fire of God? Can they sense? that you've been in prayer. I'm telling you right now, there is a people that is coming out of their prayer closets and there is a people that are full, not empty, that are overflowing, not dry. There's a people because they've sought the face of God, because they've seen God in the secret place, in a place of prayer. They're able to shift atmospheres wherever they go. Prayer changes atmospheres. You know why? Because prayer is an atmosphere. Prayer is an atmosphere. That's why when the Jewish people, whenever they will pray, I'm sure you've seen people with the Jewish prayer shawl, the prayer shawl, the talit. Some say talit. Uh, the talit. They would cover themselves with the talit and they would pray. Why? Because that literally means that they're in their hiding place with God. That literally means that they're in the prayer closet, the war room with Jesus. So prayer changes nations. Prayer changes situations. And most importantly, prayer changes you. Prayer is the avenue that transforms you from the inside out. Some say amen. I'm telling you, people of God, that God is increasing our prayers. Remember, in the upper room, all right, the upper room is not just a throne room where the government, the Acts Church was born, but the upper room was a birthing chamber. It was a birthing room. And you need to pray if you want to see movements birth. You need to pray if you want to see miracles birth. You need to pray if you want to see your children born again. You need to pray if you want to see a release of the baptism power of God. Come on. Prayer will birth things. All right. Prayer births things from the spiritual to the natural. All right. Amen. Listen. I'm excited. I'm getting a little carried away. This is just all introductions. However, I believe that God is causing us to understand these realms of prayer so we can pray like Jesus, not like Pharisees, not like Sadducees, because they're always sad, you see. But God wants you and I to pray like Jesus. Jesus, if you have a prayer life, let me tap into that right now. Someone say amen. Praise God. Listen, uh, remember, uh, we're going to go into this verse here. I'm so excited. Uh, I have a host of notes here, all right? And I can send uh, them to whomever. I can send it to all of you, all right? And uh, your mattress is free, all right? So I want to send this to all of you. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to go uh, to this um I want to go to this passage, all right? This is so, this is incredible. And many of you know this passage here, all right? I'm just looking for, for my notes here. Arabas, karadidish, karaburabush, karadidish, 
Mas que es queres queres borrabos queres barrabos queres mandra da 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 da. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Shkara baskar. All right. Let's go over to Luke chapter eleven, verse one. This is a very familiar passage. Somebody write that down for me. Thank you. Luke chapter eleven, verse one. This is known as the Lord's Prayer. However, I've heard many scholars, many people term it as the disciples' prayer. Remember, and I'm going to get into this. There's Jesus' prayers in the Bible, and then there's the apostolic prayers. Did you know that the apostles had prayers that were written out? Now, we're going to go into this. It's incredible. I'm so excited because God was really ministering to me, speaking to me about this. But Luke 11. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say this, Our Father, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors or our trespassers. So I say amen. So it's interesting because we know that the disciples come before Jesus and they ask him one thing. They don't ask Jesus, teach me how to do miracles. They don't ask Jesus, how can I get a big ministry? They don't ask Jesus, how do we get married? They ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. If there's one thing that the disciples were so intrigued by, was not by the miracles. It was not by the teachings. It was by Jesus's prayer life. Someone say amen. The disciples came before Jesus and they asked him, teach us how to pray. Do you know why? Because at that time, as a Jewish person, the Jews were only prayed liturgical prayers. What is that? Liturgy. Liturgy. The Catholic liturgy. The Presbyterian liturgy. Liturgical prayers are certain recited prayers that are written out. So you could only pray the liturgical prayers. So the Jewish people were only praying to God, Jehovah Yahweh, through repeated prayers, and that was it. But when they saw Jesus' life, Jesus prayed prayers that were off the script. Jesus prayed prayers that were different from the manuscript, that was different from the liturgy, that was different from what was recited. Jesus prayed something different from what the Pharisees and the schools of thought taught. He prayed differently from every other school of teaching, from every other Jewish person at that time. So the disciples were shocked because they said, you're breaking the rules. Remember, intimacy breaks protocol. Love crosses over. Love breaks the veil. And so as Jesus prayed, the disciples were so shocked because they said, Jesus, you pray differently from everybody else. All the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They pray it a certain way. It's repeated. There's nothing fresh. There's nothing new. They just say it, but it doesn't touch them. They just pray it, but it doesn't transform them. It's just like a repeated religious duty over and over and over again. But remember, Jesus even himself said that do not be like the Pharisees that stand on the street corner and begin to pray out, begin to cry out, try to act pious, try to act proud, like they're self-righteous and religious. Jesus had a prayer life. And he begins to teach his disciples, saying, this is how you need to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to stop right there. Because Jesus' prayers starts with our Father. Hallelujah. Whenever you pray, the most important thing for you to acknowledge is that he is our Father. All right, he's not just our king. He's not just our master. He's not just our judge, our savior, our brother, our healer. Uh, but he is our father. Someone say amen. You cannot, listen, remember, when you're praying to the master, your prayers are different. But when you're praying to our father, your prayers become different. And unfortunately, too many people are praying to a master, not to our father. Too many people are praying to a master, so they're in a slave, servant, peasant mentality, rather than being sons and daughters 
and say, our Father. Do you know who you are? Because prayer gives you access to the Father. Do you know who you are? Because prayer begins with our Father. And I want to tell you now that your prayers are not powerful if it's not in the right spirit, if it's not in the right identity. Remember, prayer is positional. Prayer is positional. And when you understand the position that you're in, then your prayers become powerful. Listen, prayer is positional, which means that you are in a sight, you are in view, you are in the room, you are you are near, you are in proximity, which means that you're a son, you're a daughter, you can come near. And so the listen, your 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 language, your conversation, how you interact, your interactions become different. Your conversation, your communication becomes different. Come on, someone say preach, Pastor Man. Listen, I feel the Holy Ghost. And way too many of the Jewish people, they pray to God like he was a foreign, mysterious, far off UFO alien object. They prayed like God was far off in a distance rather than close, rather than near, rather than accessible, rather than face to face. The Jewish people prayed like God was some mysterious God outside in the universe. But Jesus prayed like he was so near. He was face to face. Someone say, amen, you hear me today. Listen, our God, he wants you and I to understand, number one, when you pray, you recognize your position as a son, as a daughter. When you pray, raboshka, heka, rabababa, you recognize your position, our father. Amen. Someone say amen. And number two, all right, our father, uh, hollow be your name. So remember, there's holiness, which means that you come before our, our father in holiness. Okay. Your connection to God is holy. And uh, your prayer life is holy. It makes you holy. It keeps you in the holy of holies. Okay. So when you pray, you're actually in the holy of holies. Isn't that great? When you pray, Brother Tim, you are in the Holy of Holies because when you're before our Father, you're actually in the holy place. So Jesus says, if you want to pray, say, Our Father, you, you are son, your daughter, and that's holy. Some say, Amen. Remember, nobody can see God without holiness. You cannot come before, you cannot come near God. Unless you've been sanctified, unless you've been cleansed, unless you've been washed. Some say amen. All right. And then number three, our, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Someone say name. Come on. Remember, Jesus himself said, pray in my name. It's about the name of God. Come on, somebody. When you are, when you come before God and you recognize his name, remember, you're coming to him before him in the authority of that name. Come on. Every name has an authority, has a glory. And remember, at the time, the Jewish people, when they pray, they would pray in the name of this Pharisaical school. They will pray in the name of this uh, Sadducee sect. S-E-C-T. They will pray in that name. Remember, it's not in the name of Paul. It's not in the name of Barnabas or Apollos, but it's in the name of Jesus. Someone say amen. So it's about the name. So when you understand the power of the name, then your prayer life will become aligned to that nature. All right. And then number four. All right. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Remember, your prayer life has to do with intimacy with the Father, has to do with holiness, has to do with understanding the authority of the name. And then number four, it has to do with the kingdom of God. Remember, it's about his kingdom, not your empire. It's about his agenda, not your own selfishness. It is about what God desires, not what you want in life. Listen, what does God want for you? What does Jesus have for you? Come on, somebody. Listen, God has a great plan for you, and it is a part of his kingdom. Come on. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. All right, come on. Which means that the kingdom, there's a will. So prayer, you, are you guys still with me today? You guys still with me, okay? Prayer, there's a will, okay? There's a will, which means that God wants to transform your will. Or right, have you ever felt like, man, I can't do this. Uh, I'm a loser. I can't work out. 
I'm never going to get a six pack. I'm never going to get married. I'm, I'm not going to get the promotion. That is your will, which is the your willingness, your ability to push through. However, many people, their will is, um, is unmotivated or their will is weak, is easily distracted. You know what? It's because they're not in prayer. When you are in prayer, your will becomes the will of God. There's a will, there's a desire, there's a doing of the Lord God that he's wanting to release over your life. And so the Holy Spirit is wanting to release his will on earth, which is the kingdom, which is the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Your prayer life manifests heaven. What is heaven? Perfection. What is heaven? Glory. What is heaven? It's unblemished. What is heaven? There's no death. There's no sickness. There's no sin. On earth, wherever you are, as it is in heaven, I pray wherever you are that God's presence will have dominion and that heaven will come and that your earth will manifest perfection. Your earth will manifest holiness. Your earth will manifest. Someone say manifest. Your earth will manifest glory. All right. Someone say amen. So that's how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. They came before Jesus and he said, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, this is how you pray. You get connected to the Father. This is how you pray. You come before him in holiness and reverence. You acknowledge the power, the authority of his name. You, you desire for his kingdom to come. You rabashka. You, you desire for his will to be done. Amen. All right. So if you're.